Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim, hematology oncologist. Now I'm working at St. Mary Medical Center in Lewiston in Maine, the lobster country. Today we will discuss acute myeloid leukemia. Acute myeloid leukemia is the most common leukemia mostly occurring in elderly people. Thanks to the newly developed technology in analyzing DNAs and genes and molecules of acute leukemia cells, there have been tremendous improvement in diagnosis and the treatment for the last 10 years. For example, WHO reclassified the acute myeloid leukemia based on molecular genetics of leukemia cells. Likewise, European Leukemia Net stratified that leukemia to three risk groups, also depending on that uh, leukemia molecular genetics. Furthermore, scientists discovered that specific targets of the leukemia cells using this technology and developed anti-leukemia drugs, so-called targeted therapy, specifically targeting and attacking the leukemia cells. All this development contributed to the uh, improved outcome of acute leukemia patients. Thank you for watching. Acute myeloid leukemia, AML. It's the most common type of acute leukemia. Its average age of onset is 68 years. The cause is not known in most of the cases. Please look at this picture. Blood stem cells give rise to myeloid stem cell, lymphoid stem cells. From myeloid stem cells, myeloblast, proerythroblast, and the megakaryoblast are differentiated. And the monocyte and the granulocytes are differentiated from myeloblast and the red blood cells from proerythroblast and the megakaryocyte and then platelets from megakaryoblast. Environmental factors such as exposure to radiation or chemicals are important because uh, many AML cells have a certain chromosomal abnormalities and those chemicals or radiation could have damaged the uh, DNAs and the genetic genes of uh, blood stem cells and that sometimes AML progresses from other blood diseases like myelodysplastic syndrome or myeloproliferative uh, neoplasm and the presence of certain mutations uh, of the genes is highly specific for diagnosis of those secondary AML and these uh, AML types have a poor prognosis. The genes uh, are SRSF2, SF3B1, ASXL1, or etc. Really, familiar genetic abnormalities like Down syndrome, blood, uh, uh, Bloom syndrome, or Fanconi anemia are associated with the AML. In AML, myeloid stem cells couldn't differentiate into mature blood cells. Only abnormal myeloblast leukemic cells can but not the uh, normal blood cells. Many patients have symptoms of not feeling well for the past one or two, three months. By the time of diagnosis, patients develop anemia, thrombocytopenia, and uh, uh, high or low white blood cell counts. So they develop germs, weakness, shortness of breath, dizziness from anemia, bleeding or bruises from thrombocytopenia, and the uh, infections like a fever pneumonia from low uh, functional uh, red blood at the white blood cells. But enlargement of lymph nodes, liver, spleen is rare. When you check the laboratory uh, tests, you will see uh, high white blood cell counts with a median white blood cell counts 15,000. Uh, but less commonly, you can see neutropenia you often see a circulating myeloblast. Please look at this uh, photo that I took from one of my patients. And you can see the uh, myeloblast. And the anemia is very common, uh, usually uh, normal cytic and the normal chromic. Basically all patients develop anemia and the thrombocytopenia. And the rapid turnover of proliferating leukemia cells can cause high levels of uric acid, phosphate, potassium, magnesium, and the low calcium. In severe case, tumor lysis syndrome occurs even before uh, starting treatment. Severe leukocytosis 
can result in uh, falsely high potassium and low serum glucose. For diagnosis, bone marrow biopsy and the aspiration is necessary. As you see that this lady undergoing uh, bone marrow biopsy and aspiration from the posterior superior iliac spine. Diagnosis of AML is made when myeloblasts comprise over 20% of bone marrow cells. And the, please look at this photo. It's one of my patients, and you see the many myeloblasts. Uh, because this is deep, quick stain, not the uh, right stain, you can't see the nucleus very well. And the, typically, uh, you'll see the large and the sometimes many, uh, several uh, nucleus. And uh, uh, occasionally, you can see the hour rod. For diagnosis of AML, we now know that over 20% of myeloblasts have to be present in the bone marrow cells. But in acute promyelocytic leukemia, APL, promyelocyte is considered as a myeloblast. And also the presence of certain chromosomal abnormalities are considered diagnostic of AML, regardless of the myeloblast count. This includes translocation between chromosome 8 and the 21, resulting in RUNX1, RUNX1, T1 fusion protein, or inversion of chromosome 16, or translocation 1616, resulting in CBFB, cool boy, fat boy, MOH11, and the translocation between 15 and the 17 in acute promyelocytic leukemia, resulting in PML RARA protein. The translocation of uh, 821 and the inversion or translocation 16s uh, AMLs are core binding factor AML. Those core binding factor AMLs occur more commonly in the young people and they have a better prognosis. And the presence of myelo uh, uh, sarcoma also can be uh, AML. Flow cytometry for immunophenotyping is important. Most AMA leukemia cells express CD34, HLA-DR, CD33, but normal myeloblasts are negative for CD33. CD19s are expressed in the lymphoid cells, but they are positive in AML with RUNX1, RUNX1T1 uh, uh, genes. And the APL it often have a CD34 uh, negative, but they always have a CD33. CD2 positive are expressed in the T or NK cells, but they are positive in, in uh, acute promyelo, pro, uh, acute promyelocytic leukemia and the mixed phenotype acute leukemias called MPAL. Molecular studies is very, very important for predicting prognosis and the making of treatment decision. Molecular studies is done for mutations of certain genes, including FLT3, FLT3, MPM1, nuclear phosphamine 1, uh, CEPA, IDH1, IDH2, TP83, and the RUNX. Uh, there are inhibitors targeting uh, FLT3 and the I. IDH1 and IDH2. We used to use FAB classification until year 2016 when WHO reclassified AML based on the uh, uh, those uh, leukemia cells, uh, DNAs and the genetic mutations. AML with the recurrent gene abnormalities, AML with the translocation between 8 and 21, uh, resulting in RUNX1, RUNX1, T1. We already studied in the previous slide. And the AML with the inversion 16 or translocation 1616. 16. APL with a uh, translocation 15, 17, resulting in PML RARA protein and the gene. AML with a translocation 9, 11. AML with a translocation 6, 9. AML with a inversion 3 or translocation 3. AML uh, with a translocation 122. And the AML with a mutated MP, uh, MPM1, nuclear phosphamine 1. Those are good uh, uh, prognostic signs.
Emil with the biallelic mutations of SEPA. The SEPA, we have a, a pair of genes, one from father and one from mom. And both genes have a mutation in SEPA. SEPA, uh, those are uh, signs of good prognosis. And the AML from uh, myelodysplastic related dysplasia, uh, actually dysplasia related changes in the therapy related myeloid neoplasm. And the um, AML not otherwise specified include AML with a minimal differentiation without maturation, AML with a maturation, acute myelomonocytic leukemia, pure erythroid leukemia, acute megakaryoblastic leukemia uh, without translocation 122, and acute basophilic leukemia, ac acute panmyelosis with uh, myelofibrosis, and also myeloid sarcoma and the myeloid prof proliferations related to Down syndromes are separately uh, classified. European Leukemia Net stratified AML into three risk groups based on molecular genetics of acute leukemia cells in 2017. Favorable risk group, intermediate risk, and the adverse risk groups. Favorable risk groups include translocation 820 one resulting in RUNX1, RUNX1, T1 uh, uh, gene. Inversion of 16 or intertranslocation of 16 resulting in cool boy, fat boy, MIH11. Mutated NPM1 without FLIT3 ITD or with low allelic ratio of FLIT3 ITD. Biallelic mutated CEB. PA SEPA gene. Intermediate risk include mutated MPH and the high allelic ratio of FLIT3 ITD. Wild type of MPM1 without FLIT3 ITD or with low allelic ratio of FLIT3 ITD. Translocation of 9 and 11. And the cytogenetic abnormalities are not classified as favorable or adverse. And the normal karyotype AML belong to uh, intermediate risk group. Adverse risk groups include translocation of the chromosome between 6 and 9, and the translocation uh, variable with the 11Q, and the translocation of 922. This is a Philadelphia chromosome resulting in BCR-ABA1 uh, genes. And the inversion of three or intertranslocation of three uh, resulting in GATA2, MECON uh, genes. Monosomy 5 or deletion of five, monosomy 7, monosomy 17. And the complex uh, carrier type, uh, more than three, and the mono, uh, monosomal carrier type. Wild type, MPM1 and the high allelic ratio of fleet three ITDs belong to adverse risk group. Mutated run X1, AXL1, or TP53 belongs to the uh, uh, adverse group. Certain mutations like a TET2 or dynamite T3A, uh, AXL1, may be associated with the clonal hemopoiesis prevalent in the elderly without a hemo hematologic malignancy. So you have to be very careful. Using the cytogenetic and the molecular characteristic of AML, MRD, uh, it's a measurable or minimal residual disease, can be analyzed by real-time uh, quantitative uh, PCR or multi-parametric flow cytometry or N uh, new generation sequencing. Evaluation and preparation before treatment uh, include good history and physical, and the history of abnormal CBC in the past, cardiac lung, kidney functions, or other history of viral disease, hepatitis, HIV, or history of multiple pregnancies or blood transfusion, because those can cause alloimmunization of the uh, platelets. And the lab tests include the CBC, PTPTT, fibrinogen, D-dimer, CMP, phosphorus, uric acid, LDH, and urinalysis. 
and the allopurinol or raspberry case can be used to prevent uric acid nephropathy. Screening for hepatitis A, B, C, and the HIV, herpes simplex 1 and 2, and the cytomegalovirus. HLA typing for stem cell transplantation candidates, of course, and the HLA class 1 typing for refractory platelet transfusion due to HLA allo antibodies. You don't have to do it right away, but you, may, you can do it a little bit later. Cardiac evaluation with EKG to measure the QT intervals because many uh, uh, drugs prolong the QT intervals. And the echocardiogram or a MOGA scan for ejection fraction and other uh, ventricular functions. Pulmonary function test for patients with a chronic uh, lung disease, COPD, and the chest X-ray. Lumbar puncture is done only for suspected CNA, CNS involvement. It's not routinely done. Dental evaluation to check any infection, fertility consultation for childbearing age, and the peak line with the two, three ports is preferred over implantable mediport due to high risk of infection and the bleeding. We need to categorize patients to medical fit or unfit for intensive therapy. Criteria for def to define unfitness to intensive chemotherapy in AML include age over 75, regardless of their uh, physical performance status. And the physical performance, uh, ECOG 3 or over, cardiac function, uh, impairment with the presence of congestive failure or ejection fraction is 50 or less. And the abnormal pulmonary function, kidney function, uh, liver function, or active infection resist to antimicrobial viral therapy or active hepatitis or uh, mental uh, problems and other comorbidity by physician's discretion. For induction chemotherapy for medically fit patients, the standard 7 plus 3 therapy comprising uh, cytarabine IV continuous infusion for 7 days and the downorubicin or idorubicin IV day 1, 2, and 3 for 3 days uh, achieves the uh, complete remission rate of 60 to 80 percent in patients aged less than 65 and the 50 to 60 percent in patients, uh, older patients aged over 65. For FLIT3 mutation positive AML, adding mitos mitostorin orally uh, on day 8 for total 2 weeks increased the uh, uh, overall survival rates although it did not increase complete remission rates. For CD-positive favorable risk AML, uh, adding anti-CD3 immunoconjugate gemtuzumab ozogamycin, uh, we simply call GO, improved the five-year overall survival rates. In intermediate risk group patients, statistically not significant improvement was observed, so you can use it or you may not use it. But for uh, adverse risk group, it's not used because it didn't show any improvement uh, in over survivals. Gemtuzumab ozogamycin is the IV. We give it on day one for seven, but not for the second cycle uh, treatment when patient did not achieve complete remission with the first induction therapy. And for consolidation therapy, day one only. Fixios is a fixed dose combination of liposomal downorubicin 44 mg per meter square and the cytarabine is approved by FDA for therapy-related AML or AML with a myelodysplasia related uh, changes. It also improves in fit older age patients 60 to 75 high risk AML when compared to the uh, uh, standard 7, 3, 7 plus 3 therapy. Be careful, it contains copper, so patients need to have a copper level checked for copper toxicity. And another thing you need to uh, know is hematolo hematology recovery time is longer than standard 7 plus 3 induction therapy. In those 7, 3, in about 20 days, the CBC recovers, but not for 
uh, Vixios. It takes 40 days. And the second cycle uh, should be given two to five weeks after the first cycle because of slow hematology recovery. And the consolidation therapy uh, uh, begin five to eight weeks after the start of induction therapy. And the, before each cycle of Dawn or Rubison or Ida Rubison, please check the cardiac function with the echocardiogram or MOGA scan. For medically unfit patients, hypomethylating agents such as azacitidine or decidabine and the BCL2 inhibitor, uh, venetoclax, combination therapies are used. Uh, azacitidine IV or sub-Q for seven days and the decidamine IV for five days plus venetoclax uh, uh, for cycle one, day one, 100 milligrams, day two, 200 milligrams, and the day three and on, 400 milligrams to prevent the tumor lysis syndrome. And the, from cycle two, uh, 400 milligrams daily. This combination therapy uh, can achieve complete remission rate of 65% or even higher. And those uh, as a cytidine or decidabine, either one is, is, is fine. They produced comparable uh, CR or over survival rates. You have to reduce venetoclax dose when cytochrome P40 inhibitors are used concomitantly because those postconazole can raise the uh, venetoclax uh, level, drug levels, and they, patients develop severe, severe toxicity. And also, levaquin also is a, a moderate CYP3A4 inhibitors. And the, uh, I recommend to discontinue those uh, hepatotoxic uh, uh, drugs like uh, statins, especially simvastatin and Lipitor, because those are weak uh, CYP3A4 inhibitors. And after first cycle, bone marrow exam should be done at age uh, at day about 30s, not day of uh, uh, 14 or 15, like a, after a seven and seven plus three uh, chemo induction chemotherapy. When ANC is over 500 after the first cycle, then second cycle is given. If it's not, second cycle need to be delayed up to 14 days. Because many patients are elderly and they're medically unfit, you can't keep pushing this uh, 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 chemotherapy until they develop, uh, they uh, recover in some degree. In most, uh, in case of severe cytopenia, those can be reduced to 14 or 21 days uh, in subsequent 28 day cycles. IDH inhibitors, if IDH mutation positive, uh, then uh, those inhibitors can be used uh, with or without uh, hypomethylating agents. The FDA approved the uh, ivocidinib for IDH1 mutation as a first line, but uh, uh, anacidinib for IDH2 mutation as a second line. Hypomethylating agents need dose adjustment for hepatic and renal dysfunction or toxicity. And the low-dose cytarabine has a less efficacy than hypomethylating agents. Glass degib, uh, those are hedge dog pathway inhibitors, can be used with a low-dose uh, cytarabine. Gemtuzumab, ozogamycin, GO, uh, the anti-CD3 immunoconjugate, can be used at the single induction therapy, which is approved by FDA. To evaluate response after induction therapy, bone marrow aspiration biopsy is done at uh, day 14 to uh, 20 uh, after 7 plus 3 chemo induction. And you evaluate the bone marrow. If the residual disease is present, which means myeloblast over 5%, then repeat the chemotherapy with the same regimen, which is the second cycle induction therapy. And uh, at uh, day 28 to 30, bone marrow biopsy and aspiration done again to confirm the complete remission. The complete remission, uh, the ANC has to be over 1,000 and platelet 100, over 100,000. Complete remission with the incomplete hematology recovery. CRI means uh, myeloblast less than 5% in the bone marrow, 
but ANC is less than 1,000 and the platelet less than 100,000. Then consolidation therapy is given. Depending on the favorable risk, uh, the regimen is uh, different. For favorable risk group, high dose cytarabine, uh, 3 gram per meter square per day uh, for five days, or 3 gram per meter square twice a day for days one, two, three, for total three cycles are given. For intermediate risk, high dose uh, cytarabine or uh, autologous hematopoietic stem cell transplantation or uh, straight to allogeneic stem cell transplantation uh, can be used. They produce the four-year disease-free survival 30% for high-dose uh, cytarabine alone and for after autologous transplantation 45% and about 50% after allogeneic stem cell transplantation. But the treatment mortality rate is 5% for high-dose uh, cytarabine, 6% autologous transplantation and the 20% for allogeneic stem cell transplantation. This autologous transplantation is uh, indicated for intermediate risk group when MRD is negative after high dose uh, consolidation therapy. But what about the favorable risk group? Uh, the bone marrow or stem cell transplantation is not necessary. For adverse risk group, allogeneic stem cell transplantation is indicated, and that it yields four-year disease-free survival 40%, but the mortality rate is high at 20%. After uh, azacitidine or decidabine and the venetoclax combination therapy, bone marrow examination is done 28 to 30 days, not the day 14 or to uh, 20, after the first cycle to assess the response. After cytopenia is reasonably recovered, then continue the next cycle, uh, cycle two. If the complete remission is confirmed, then uh, uh, granulocyte colony stimulating factors can be used for prolonged neutropenia from cycle number two. Maintenance therapy doesn't have much role in uh, AML treatment, but recently uh, oral azacitidine, uh, the uh, brand name Onireg, for uh, 14 days in a 28-day cycle improved the overall survival rate. Uh, it's indicated uh, for AML patients who achieved complete or complete remission with uh, incomplete hematology recovery following intensive induction chemotherapy, but not able to complete intensive curative uh, consolidation therapy, such as allogenic stem cell transplantation. When you treat AML patients, it's inevitable to see and manage uh, serious side effects and complications. Infection from prolonged neutropenia it's almost always uh, occurs. And the empiric antibiotics should be given within 60 days of neutrophenic fever as soon as possible. Usually we use zosin, cefafine, or meropenem. For skin and soft tissue infection, vancomycin is used. And the, when the culture sensitivity results came out later, then we treat accordingly. Um, if the fever continues, then uh, antifungal or antiviral drugs are used. Frequently, we use the uh, prophylactic antibiotics like levofloxacin or antifungal fosaconazole or antiviral Veltrex or Zovrex. It's kind of alarming that carbapenem resistant cleft cell infection is emerging. You need to consult with the infectious disease uh, specialist. And those uh, prophylactic or uh, therapeutic antifungal therapy, or even antibiotic therapy, are uh, CDP3A4 inhibitors. So the dose of certain drugs, like a Benetoclax, has to be uh, reduced and adjusted. For neutropenia, 
uh, granulocyte colony stimulating factors not used routinely with induction therapy in the field of leukemic cell uh, proliferation. But some studies show it shortened the duration of neutropenia. And the, furthermore, priming leukemia cells with uh, GCSF with induction therapy concurrently uh, may improve complete remission rate. For anemia, uh, irradiated leukocyte depleted uh, uh, packed red blood cell transfusions are given to keep hemoglobin over 8 gram per deciliter, but it can be flexible. Thrombocytopenia uh, irradiated aphoresis platelet one unit at a time is given for platelet counts less than 100,000 to prevent spontaneous bleeding. But in case of bleeding, like a DIC bleeding, you have to keep platelet counts much higher, uh, over 30,000. For coagulopathy, like a DIC, uh, fibrinogen level has to be kept over 100 to 150 gram per deciliter with a cryoprecipitates or a fresh frozen plasma. Differentiation syndrome is common in acute promyelocytic leukemia treated with ETRA. Dexamethasone 10 mg IV uh, every 12 hours for three days minimum, then taper off uh, is used. But be careful. This differential syndromes uh, causes fever or hypotension or poor effusion, pericardial effusion, very uh, uh, similar to a sepsis. So you don't want to give dexamethasone when the patients develop sepsis. So you have to be highly, highly careful. Tumor lysis syndrome, especially uh, with a hyperleukocytosis over 100,000, it's commonly seen. You may use hydroxyurea just before induction therapy to lower the white blood cell count. And the monitor electrolytes, potassium, uh, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, uric acid, and renal function. Uh, give good IV hydration, use allopurinol prophylactically or uh, rasburicase for hyperuricemia. Neutropenic enterocolitis called tifilitis in neutropenic patients after chemotherapy are very, uh, is a very dangerous. Patients develop abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. The CT scan of abdomen and pelvis has to be done immediately. After induction chemotherapy or even after allogeneic stem cell transplantation, about 20 to 40 percent of patients relapse. When relapse is suspected, the bone marrow aspiration is done for routine bone marrow evaluation and a mutation analysis for FLEET3, MPM1, IDH, CEPA, ROX1, AXL1, and the TP53. New mutation could have been occurred uh, differently from the original uh, leukemia. HLA typing for candidates for allogeneic stem cell transplantation should be done. Pre-treatment evaluation and lab are same as the pre-induction chemotherapy. Lumbar punctures for suspected CNA, CNS involvement after uh, coagulopathy is corrected. The best chance of cure or long-term remission can be achieved by allogeneic stem cell transplantation. So patients need to be referred to a, a transplantation center. Allogeneic stem cell, uh, stem cell transplantation outcome is better when no detectable leukemia uh, after in intense reinduction chemotherapy. And this, if the uh, relapse after first stem cell transplantation, the second stem cell transplantation or a donor lymphocyte infusion for patients who had uh, more than six months of uh, CL duration after first transplantation yielded two-year survival about 35%. If no immediate availability of HLA matched donor, then uh, chemotherapy to achieve complete remission until a uh, donor is available. If CR is not achieved, still myeloablative allotransplantation still can benefit some patients. If patient's condition is not for myeloablative allotransplantation, 
non-myeloablative allotransplantation is considered to produce graft versus leukemia effect. It takes time, uh, so it's not indicated for rapidly progressing AML. For reinduction therapy for relapsed or refractory AML, you can use a targeted therapy if they have a target mutation is present. For example, isocydinib for IDH1 mutation and acidinib for IDH2 mutation. Be careful, patients can develop differentiation syndrome with the targeted therapy and the QT prolongation. For fleet 3 mutation patients, uh, gilteritinib uh, orally uh, can induce about 30 to 40 percent of complete remission. Also be careful it can cause differential syndrome, QT prolongation, and the posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, pancreatitis. And the sorapenib Nexavar has been shown some efficacy for fleet 3 uh, mutated AML. Anti-CD3 uh, agents Gemtuzumab ozagomycin is, uh, is immunoconjugate. It can cause hepatotoxicity uh, with a sinusite obstruction or a venoocclusive disease, which is commonly occurs in the allogenic stem cell transplantation. And the reinduction chemotherapy can induce CR rate about 30 to 50 percent, which include cytarabine, dalnorubicin, hydrocytarabine, hydrocytarabine with a mitoxantron a toposide and the mitoxantrum with the toposide and the other uh, combination. Also, gemtuzumab ozogamycin can be combined with the cyt uh, cytarabine and the um, uh, mitoxantrum. Acute promyelocytic leukemia, APL, is quite different from other AMLs. Accounts for about 10% of all leukemia and its median age of onset uh, is 40 years. 95% of APL are characterized by translocation of chromosome between 15 and 17, resulting in PML-RARA fusion protein. It stands for promyelocytic leukemia retinoic acid receptor alpha. Diagnosis of APL requires detection of PML-RARA gene by FISH or PCR tests. Also, 40% of APL have additional chromosomal abnormalities such as trisomy 8 or fleet 3 ITA mutation. 5% of APL have a negative PML and the RARA variants, including PZIF RARA due to translocation between 11 and 17, NPM1 RARA, NUMA RARA, STAT5B RARA. APL cells morphologies are different. They have a two uh, 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 cell types, hypergranular and the microgranular APL cells. Flow cytometry uh, shows positive CD33 on always, but weak positive or negative CD34 and the negative HLA-DR. Uh, Those are positive for other AM AML. About 80% presents with the neutropenia, not the leukocytosis, and the 20% leukocytosis. APL causes hemorrhage due to coagulopathy or DIC in majority of patients. DIC uh, uh, patients have a positive D-dimer, prolonged PTPTT, and the low fibrinogen. APL coagulopathy is a medical emergency, as 40% will develop cerebral or pulmonary hemorrhage if, it's un if untreated, which results in death. About 30% of patients die within 30 days if not treated with ATRA immediately. It's important to suspect APL before results of molecular tests like a fish uh, are available, which takes several days at least. So hematologists taking care of leukemia should be able to recognize promyelocytes in the bone marrow aspirate slides. If APL is suspected, treatment with ATRA, all transretinoic acid, should be started immediately, even before bone marrow or uh, blood molecular and the cytogenetic test res results are available. If it turns out to be not APL, then proceed treatment according to the 
uh, the cytogenetic results. There is no harm done with the ETRA uh, given for a few days. With appropriate early treatment, 90% of APL patients achieve complete remission and long-term survival. But without treatment, patients invariably die within one month. There are three risk groups to predict prognosis and to guide treatments. Low-risk group patients have WBC counts less than 10,000 and the platelet over 40,000. Intermediate risk group patients have WBC counts less than 10,000 and the platelet less than 40,000. In high-risk group, WBC counts is over 10,000 and the platelet less than 40,000 per microliter. For low and the intermediate risk group patients, ETRA and the arsenic trioxide is used as, a, as an induction therapy. And for high risk group patients, ETRA uh, with uh, donorubicin is used. Be careful. Arsenic trioxide can prolong QT intervals. So the EKG is done every week or even more when necessary. Also, please check electrolytes and uh, correct it and avoid drugs prolonging uh, QT intervals. Assessment of bone marrow biopsy aspirage done in 30 to 35 days to confirm complete remission. It's not the 14 days uh, like other uh, AML patients. Real-time quantitative PCR for PML LARA can be used to uh, check the uh, uh, MRD. Once the uh, induction therapy uh, induced complete remission, then consolidation therapy is given. For low and the intermediate risk group patients, uh, ETRA and uh, arsenic trioxide uh, is given for total four cycles, but it's a little bit different uh, way of giving it. Uh, ETRA is given continuously daily by mouth, but ETRA, uh, arsenic trioxide given IV for five days uh, con uh, consecutively every week for four weeks in an eight-week cycle. In other words, you give uh, one month of a uh, arsenic trioxide and one month off for total uh, eight months. For high-risk patients, uh, arsenic trioxide for uh, five weeks for two cycles followed by ETRA uh, for seven days only and the donorubicin or idorubicin is given for two cycles. For maintenance therapy for low and the intermediate risk patients achieving complete remission, no maintenance therapy is indicated. For high risk patients, ETRA uh, for day one to seven every other week or uh, day 1 to 15 every three months for total one year uh, is given. When APL relapsed, it's a very rare, about 10% relapses, and the AT, uh, arsenic trioxide for 25 days or five days a week for five weeks, total 25 doses, followed by autologous stem cell uh, transplantation is indicated. For APL, allogeneic stem cell transplantation did not show any benefits, so it, it has no role here. Gemtuzumab osogamycin uh, is given if strongly positive uh, CD33. For follow-up bone marrow biopsy for uh, quantitative PCR every three months for one year, and then you can do the blood test for uh, quantitative PCR for follow-up. Prognosis of AML uh, differs depending on the uh, risk groups. Favorable risk group have much better uh, prognosis without even stem cell transplantation. As you see, the five-year survival, I would say is a cure, is over uh, 60%, about 70%. And for intermediate group uh, patients, the uh, uh, five-year survival is just below 60%. And the uh, adverse risk group have a lower uh, five-year survival, which is about 40%.
Acute promyelocytic leukemia patients have a much better prognosis. The cure rate is 80 to 90 percent after treatments. Early death can occur and is in about almost 30 percent of patients if it's not treated immediately. For the last five, six years, there have been tremendous uh, improvement in diagnosis and treatment of AML, but I still have questions and thoughts to improve the outcome of AML patients. As a cytidine with a, a venetoclax or a cytarabine with a venetoclax eliminated MDR in patients with residual MPM1 and the FLIP3 ITD negative patients. So, can patients with a favorable risk group with the MPM1 mutation be treated with less toxic therapy such as as a cytidine and venetoclax instead of very toxic 7 plus 3 intensive induction chemotherapy? Vixios improved overall survival in all the patients with the high risk AML patients when compared with the standard 7 plus 3 induction therapy. So, can Vixios be used for all high-risk patients? As I cited in uh, this side, I've been with the uh, venetoclax is highly effective, achieving 70% of complete remission rate with a much uh, more tolerable uh, side effect for elderly or unfit patients. However, it is recommended to continue this therapy until this progression or severe toxicity occurs. And all these patients are elderly patients. Can it be stopped after four to six cycles, especially when patients have achieved MDR status? Recently, FDA approved uh, oral as a cytidine uh, for maintenance therapy for patients, uh, elderly patients who cannot or refuse to have a stem cell transplantation after achieving complete remission uh, with the induction or consolidation chemotherapy. Can maintenance therapy be with a specific inhibitors of AML with a certain gene mutation be used preemptively before relapse? For example, before relapse, patients who have a positive FLIP3 can be treated with a mitostorin, uh, gilteritinib, or even sorafenib, or the isocinine for IDH1, or anacinine for IDH2 mutation, or even anti-CD3 uh, gemtuzumab osogamycin. This is the uh, St. Mary Medical Center where I, I, see, I saw uh, uh, many uh, acute leukemia patients. And uh, oncology medical staff gave me this shirt uh, as a gift. Thank you for watching.